Hey everybody, it's Wayne bringing you guys a portfolio update. I have been missing in action this past month. My family and I have been enjoying a family vacation, but I'm back ready to share some good news. This past month, both my wife and I received modest cost of living increases at both of our jobs as well as my retirement pension in which i also received a modest cost of living increase and so as you guys know i contribute as much as i can to my m1 portfolio you can see here up until late june i was contributing $100 every single day without exception i have been able to increase that from $100 per day to now 125 per day. And that extra $25 really goes a long way. It's an extra $125 per week or 6,500 extra per year. If I'm able to maintain this 125 Monday through Friday, that's a total just to my M1 brokerage of $32,500 on an annual basis. Now, in these portfolio updates, I only feature my M1 as well as my Robinhood brokerage, but truth be told, I am also putting as much money as I can into my 457B. My wife is also maxing out her 457B. I also have a 403B that I'm contributing to. We put money in our kids' college. And of course, we are now both maxing out our Roth IRA account. So every single dollar counts, and I'm really excited because even though they were were modest increases regarding those wage increases you know an extra dollar is still an extra dollar all right let's start by giving you guys an m1 update and i'm excited to say that there are two stocks that i have recently added to my m1 portfolio so we're going to go ahead and talk about that first currently the portfolio stands though at 144,000 this past week things are looking relatively good up about two and a half percent or thirty four hundred dollars Let's go and take a look at these slices, and I've got four of them, quarterly dividends, long-term hold, monthly dividends, and ETF. But if we look at the actual target percentage, long-term hold sits at 80%. So every single penny of that $125 per day goes to the stocks within that long-term hold slice. Now, the last update that I gave you, I only had 16 total positions. I have added a 17th, and if we look here at the bottom, Caterpillar is one of my most recent additions next to UNH in that long-term hold slice. Now, when I added Caterpillar at the beginning of the month, that meant pretty much every single penny of those daily contributions was going to build up this cat position. So we're currently at five shares. My average cost per share is 248, and the markets have been doing relatively great this past month. So I do have some built-in value already. That Caterpillar position was a stock that I wanted to buy over the last, I would say, year and a half. And it just never reached a desirable price point for me to get into it. And that's one of the nice things about daily cost averaging. I've really become less concerned about how much I'm paying for that stock because we know that daily cost averaging, you know, if you are truly buying that stock on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, over time, right, you are going to be able to average down on a consistent level. And so I stopped trying to time right the price of caterpillar and just said you know what this is a stock that i've wanted to own let's go ahead and add it to this slice and we'll let m1 do all the heavy lifting so there you have it guys the long-term slice within m1 now increases by one stock we've got o coca-cola pepsi avgo unp visa lowe's abv so unh a relatively newer edition as well texas roadhouse mcdonald's procter and gamble waste management also a relatively newer edition i think i added this back in late march maybe early april johnson and johnson caterpillar and of course exxon mobile all right, now let's go ahead and talk about the second position that I added to my M1 portfolio. This one's going to be in the monthly dividend slice. Now, I didn't really add a position. I actually replaced the position. And so take a look here. I sold out of my JetB position. Yes, I sold out of all 101 shares that I had in my M1 portfolio. JetBee has been really good to me over the past year and a half, and I actually made profit. Take a look here. I sold my 101 shares for $5,539. If we look here at my spreadsheet, specifically line item number seven, my cost basis was at 5507 So I actually had a slight gain 
on selling out of that position. And if we look at all the dividends that I received this past month, and I even actually qualified for a dividend for the month of July, that puts me at $305 that I made this past year alone from my JEPI distributions and dividends. So why did I sell out of my JEPI position? Well, take a look here. I've got a few stocks in my monthly portfolio that pay out variable dividends. And you can see here, Devo, JEPI, JEPQ, and Tesla, they pay out varying monthly dividends or distributions. And I wanted more stability with these monthly pairs. I like JEPI. I like JEPQ, but to me, I see the writing on the wall with JEPI. I do think the cost of JEPI is going to go down. I think that JEPI is going to have a stronger distribution slash dividend in a sideways market, and that's currently not what we are seeing this last couple of months. And so I sold out of JEPI for a profit, and I bought BST in return. And so now those 101 shares that I sold out of JEPI, they purchased me 160 shares of BlackRock Science and Technology, stock ticker BST. Now this stock does pay a monthly dividend. And if we take a look here, uh, my cost basis, as you guys can see from my 160 shares, is $5,537. Now, the dividend per month is $0.25 cents or a forward yield of 5.08%. So I can expect to receive $40 on a monthly basis or $481 on an annual basis. So I made the jump. I am not turning my back on uh, JEPI. I am willing to repurchase. But for me, I think I can get it at a lower price point. So I'm gonna be watching uh, JEPI over the next few months to see if the price does go down. And if it does, I'll gladly go back in and buy another 100 shares. But in the meantime, I'm really excited about this transition from uh, JEPI to BST. All right, let's go ahead and give you guys a look at my Robinhood brokerage currently sitting at over 413,000 this past week, up 1.5% or about $6,300. Now I mentioned this past week that I added two positions in my M1, Caterpillar and BSD. I also added several positions in my Robinhood brokerage, starting things off with S-Fall. This is a monthly pair and you can see here, I now have a total of 300 shares. Oh, Income Realty, now this is a position I primarily hold in my M1, but because the cost had gone below 60, rather than having to wait the full day it would take to make the purchase in M1, I just purchased 34 shares in my Robinhood. I also picked up 100 shares of OARC. Now this is the position that I previously held. I transferred my OR holding over to M1 only to find that M1 did not support that stock. So unfortunately, I had to sell out of it. But I've wanted to own OARC even though I sold out of it when I transferred it over. So I repurchased 100 shares of OARC. This is yet again another monthly pair. And last but not least, this might be a surprise to some of you, but I also picked up 100 shares of Bank of America. Bank of America has really been hovering around its 52 week low. Now I had 300 shares in 2022, but ultimately 200 of those shares were called away from selling covered calls. And I wanted to buy back in because of those 52 week lows. So I did purchase 100 more shares of Bank of America. That puts my total number of shares at 200. My average cost has gone down from where it was to now $34.40. And if Bank of America goes below its 52 week low, I would even consider picking up another 100 shares so I can average down on my total amount of holdings. All right, let's go ahead and wrap things up by talking about dividends received. We'll start things off with Robinhood. On July 3rd, I received $64 from that monthly pair that I just talked about, S-Fall. Now at the time of this dividend payment, I only had 200 shares. I now have 300 which means starting next month, I'm going to be receiving almost $100 on a monthly basis. Best Buy paid me out 99 cents. Remember, I had 100 shares called away. So this is the fractional share that I had left over from that transaction. Southwest Airlines paid me out $18. This is a position that I would like to sell out of when I'm in the green, so stay tuned on that. Main Street Capital, $23. IIPR paid me out $3.77. Conical Phillips, very small position, $1.33. 
and O Realty Income. Remember, I did make these purchases in the Robinhood brokerage. I don't know if I'll actually transfer them over to my M1, but in the meantime, these 34 shares earned me $8.69. And concluding things with dividends received so far from M1 in the month of July, Coca-Cola has paid me out $26. VT Properties, $39. Jeppy, remember that's the last time I will receive a dividend slash distribution from this covered call ETF. And I received $36.29. JetQ doing far more better in my portfolio to include overall growth as well as the dividends paid. Paid me out slightly more than Jeppy at $37.05. MO or the Altria Group paid me out $9.40. MPW, a very small position, $4.06. Main Street Capital. Again, I own this both in M1 and Robinhood, paid me out $23.69. Blue Isle Capital paid me out $3.30. ADC paid me out $1.13. Horizon Technology, this is also a monthly pair, $73.43. One of my largest monthly paying positions in my M1 brokerage. Main Street Capital, it looks like they divided this payout into this extra cash payout as well. So add the 11 cents to that uh, $23.69. Oh, Realty, $68.12. And WP Carry, $7.48. Which means so far in the month of July, between Robinhood and M1, I have earned $448. I think this number is gonna get pretty close to $800. Remember, I've added those monthly pairs. And so we should see that income increase a little bit. So we'll see. We'll see how close we can get to a thousand. Uh, but again, so excited that you guys continue to tune in, give me that support, and we'll see you on the next one.